to the Eclectic Soul channel. I'm so glad you guys are here today. I, I have been really nervous and really excited for this kind of video. I'm really happy that you guys are joining me. Um, but you know, we have so much to cover today and I have so much to talk to you about. So we're gonna kind of be here for a little while. So I hope you guys will bear with me and hang in with me here. Things first, I want to say welcome to the Eclectic Soul channel. You guys are a bit of an eclectic newbie. Welcome here to the channel. Uh, we are eclectics that like to talk about a variety of different soulful topics um, or do soulful things. The motto we go by is do what makes your soul happy. And pretty much that's what we do here. We just, we talk about anything from yoga to baking to chakras to saging to music to morning routine i mean everything is discussed here everything is done here so um if you guys have been here before and you guys are a regular i want to welcome you guys back thank you for always hanging out with me and you know making this channel really special i uh i i think i say this like every single video but it's it really is true that I love to do this. I love to be part of this channel and do this channel. So I'm really happy that you guys are here and you're joining me today. So uh, this is a video I actually have been wanting to talk about for about six months. And it's finally time and it's finally here to do it. I'm honestly a little nervous. I'm honestly a little... I, I'm honestly a little nervous yet very excited to talk about this topic because I feel like it's such a massive topic and something that everybody talks about and as you guys can tell from the title of this video you probably have an idea of what we're going to get into today um but i kind of just wanted to do uh, what i'm going to call a bit of a soulful chat you know just kind of lay back take a chill and just talk about topics um i kind of got this like this idea from one of my favorite youtubers i will definitely link her video on this topic down in the description below um, and you guys should definitely check out her channel her name is Kaylin Nicholson uh, she has uh, her own personal channel that she just vlogs on but then she also has another video called Coz it is K-O-Z-E um, and basically she does what's called coffee talks where she does a variety of different more spiritual emotional topics shall I say um, and just I mean a wide range and uh, I kind of got this idea from her because I, I love listening to those and I love that she does those and she just talks about anything and everything and I I love those and so I kind of wanted to kind of give my rendition of a coffee talk shall I say but in my own way that's that's why we're here so this video is gonna kind of be composed into three different parts or chapters, shall I say. Um, and I'll definitely put the, the timestamps of the chapters so you guys can kind of follow along. Follow along if you guys want to go to a specific chapter, hear about a certain part rather than the other. Totally understandable. I don't want to talk about the topic as a whole and kind of my viewpoint as a topic and you know how I feel about society and the topic. And then kind of talk about my own experiences or my own personal views on the topic and then I kind of also want to get into some tips at the end that will kind of wrap the whole thing together nice and tidy with a little bow on top. I want to also put some disclaimers with this video. We are going to be kind of talking about a semi sensitive topic or it might be sensitive to some and I definitely want to put some disclaimers. Um, you know I, I when I am talking about this topic I am completely talking about from a personal experience perspective I am no means an expert I am not a doctor I am not a I have no like medical like no like educational degree background on this kind of subject and I feel like I should make that disclaimer and just say this is what I've experienced in my life what I feel about this topic and my own perspective and so because we're gonna be talking about body image and body positivity. I also want to make a disclaimer that um, you know, I am going to be talking about my own body type, shall I say, um, kind of specific towards my body type, but I want this to also be something for everyone out there. This is something for all types of body types, all different women and men out there. If you're, you know, you're on the slimmer side or you're on the curvier side or everything in between this is for every type of body type so um you know i definitely want this to be um for everyone and to really talk about this topic in a general broad sense but i, I don't also i do want to say that this will kind of come from my own 
especially when I'm talking about like my own personal experiences. I am kind of talking about specifically my body type and I'll get into that. So two, I think I want to mention that like if you guys like these kinds of videos, I have done a few of these videos in the past. I see OC video, I'll pop it up here. And uh, you know, if you guys really like these kind of topics or you like these kinds of videos and you guys want me to do more little chats, um, you kind of want that to be a theme, um, definitely let me know in the comments below what you guys think, um, what, what kind of topics you would like me to talk about or want to discuss or, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. I would love to hear from you. And that we're kind of be here for a little bit. I'm going to be talking pretty good of a deal. Definitely going for the tea today because my voice is going to be a little scratchy, I can tell. A peach black tea and it is so good. Like it, it's, a, it's got that black tea taste, which is what I like. But it's also got just a hint of that peach fruitiness and I'm like, I'm all over the map for it. If you guys would like to come chill with me and let's talk about body image and body positivity. You'd grab yourself a cup of coffee, cup of tea, glass of wine, whatever you're comfortable with and let's get into it, shall we? I've really been wanting to talk about this kind of topic for a bit of a while. Um, and I also wanted to like, I also want to bring forth a realness and really be honest about how I feel about this topic and how, you know, how I see this topic. So that's kind of why I'm opting for my outfit today. I um, I really wanted to get all dressed, I mean, besides my makeup, I I wanted to look nice today. <laughs> Talking about body imaging and body positivity, uh, one thing that I'm kind of insecure about, and I'll be real right up front, is my arms. I feel like my arms are just never the way I want them to look sometimes. And that's a lot of times why you see in my videos I wear like shawls or cardigans or you know something to cover my arms. I'm always so insecure about my arms. And you know what? I don't want to be insecure today. And I definitely want to be real and say, you know what? I'm gonna wear a tank top in my video today and just be unapologetically myself. Take it or leave it. So that is the reason for my outfit today. It's kind of basic, kind of bland, but hey, whatever. I don't even know where to begin with this topic. Um, you know, I, I know that body image and body positivity or even body negativity has been covered all over the internet. You can look up many different videos and much, much content on body image and body positivity and like it's all over the map. Body image to me is what we perceive ourselves and how we feel about our bodies, how we feel about our overall physical health and see our physical selves as, you know. I think nowadays body image and you know all types of body types are so much widely accepted now and it's so wonderful to see that in the world. It's so wonderful to see so many different body types and so many different people being a voice or being a role model for body image. You know, uh, the person that definitely comes to my mind is like Lizzo. You know, I absolutely love Lizzo. I love how she is unapologetically herself. She's you know, always on social media talking about how loving yourself, accepting your body for who you are, and never letting anyone tell you any freaking different. And that, that just, that warms my heart that that's so like that now, and it's so like that in the world we live in today, and it's such more accepting for that kind of thing. You know, I wish, where was Lizzo when I was in high school, you know? I, I, I always think about that, like where was she in high school or you know even other people like Demi Lovato she is such a body positive body image advocate she's always talking about loving yourself loving your body you know going through insecurities and going through struggles you know and, and understanding that like you can be happy with yourself and never let anyone tell you different I think that's just such that's such an amazing world we live in because you know we we need to be more like that we need to be more accepting of our bodies and to love ourselves and if uh, you know realizing that if other people don't see that that's on them that's their problem we focus on ourselves and we focus on what we love about ourselves what we love about our bodies and doing what's right for our bodies because everyone is so different 
when it comes to our bodies. Even a step further and saying like, you know, it's great to love yourself and accept your body, but also taking care of your body. Taking care of your body and being a healthy person. I feel like that's such a way to love yourself and that's a way to really have positive body image is to take care of yourself and take care of your body because I think you can exude confidence and self-esteem and feel really good about yourself if you feel good on the inside as well. Drinking water, getting sleep, getting exercise, doing yoga, everything in between. Or even beyond that, you know, looking good for yourself. Like, I absolutely hate when people do this to me and it drives me up the wall is when they say, oh, what are you, you got makeup on, what are you looking good for? Who are you trying to impress? Me, that's who I'm trying to impress. Like I put on makeup because it makes me feel confident. It makes me look good and it makes me feel good on the inside. Like I want to look good for myself so I can look in a mirror and be like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> to impress everybody else should be gone and out of here because we are on this earth for us and for God, if you believe in God as well, to be happy and to live our lives and to do what makes our souls happy. And if wearing makeup and, you know, taking bubble baths and looking good, no matter your size, no matter your age, no matter your, your background, whatever, no matter any of that, and showing up for you, that's what matters. And how our society is today, I love how that's you know, becoming more and more of a topic discussed and more of an acceptance of that kind of topic and more, you know, an overall, hey, you can be beautiful at any size. You know, I remember growing up and it, it was black and white. It was you're either fat or either skinny. And it, it's not, that's not right. That is never going to be right because there's so many different body types. Everybody comes in different shapes and sizes and colors. And that is what makes us so unique and so diverse and beautiful in this world is we are not one cookie cutter. Disclaimer, I'm gonna get a little spiritual, but God never intended us to be cookie cutter perfect people. He made us different types of people to harmonize with everybody. And it, you know, that's just, that's what I love about body positivity or the body positivity movement is that it's, it's bringing forth the acceptance and the, you know, the, the acceptance and the positivity of there being so many different types of people in the world and how we should celebrate that. Yeah. Said, I do kind of want to touch on some negatives when it comes to body positivity or body image in society. You know, I, I know, I know a lot of people will say that they're sick of hearing about body image being talked about or they're sick of the topic being so celebrated or people should not celebrate it. Something that I, I recently came across I guess there's something I've heard recently where it's you know if you're more on the curvy side you know you should not celebrate being curvy because that's a danger to your health and being a bit on the bigger side or perhaps if you're experiencing or if you're more on the obese side that should not be a positive thing because that means you it's not healthy I somewhat agree with that like I, I can see that viewpoint so, accept yourself for who you are no matter what size you are however you know if you are perhaps making life choices that are not benefiting for your health and or perhaps making it hard not not making yourself bigger or you know that kind of thing like it doesn't the size does not matter meaning like if you are making life choices that is detrimental to your health that can definitely be a hindrance I should say should definitely not be celebrated all the while you can also be a, a slimmer person and still have health problems working on being healthy and being all the best you can be in a health sense is what we should strive for as far as body image you know and understanding that being insecure, insecurities are insecurities. Like there, I can't think of one person on this earth that's never been insecure about their body or a part of their body or about themselves as a whole. You know, we are all insecure. We've all been insecure. We've all gone through things. As you can kind of see on this channel, you follow me on my socials or 
just looking at me at this video right now, you can you can definitely tell I'm a bit of a plus size curvier girl of, of, of body types. <laughs> um, I think I had a moment when I was a kid when I stopped, I looked in the mirror and it came to fruition that I'm like, hey, I'm a bigger girl. You know, I, I finally stopped and realized it. Um, I will say that I did not use the word curvy or big. I did use the bad F word, which was fat. And, you know, but, but I never said it in like a derogatory, degrading way to myself. I was just like, hey, okay, I'm fat. All right. And like, for some reason, and I don't know why, but I always accepted it. Like, I, I've always... I, I think I remember standing in the mirror being like, oh, I'm fat. Okay. And I just like moved on. Like it was the weirdest thing ever because, you know, while I understand people may look in the mirror and they don't have that same experience, they look in the mirror and they say something they don't like or, you know, causes an insecurity for them, you know, that I completely understand. I completely understand that as well. But just for some reason, I accepted it and I, I never really... I never, I don't want to downplay or desensitize anybody else's experience, you know, but just for me personally, like, it never bothered me, shall I say. Like, I always knew I was a big girl. I always knew that I had to go shop in the plus size section at Walmart or wherever, you know. I always knew that I was never going to be skinny at the time. At the time, when, when I was growing up and when I was a kid in high school, there were two body types. There was skinny or fat. That's what you were. Either either one category or the other. And I think, like, you know, I knew I was in the big category. I was in the fat category. And I always knew that. And I always accepted. And I said, you know what? That's okay. I'm, I'm a fat girl. I'm going to be a fat girl for the rest of my life. I know I'm going to be. And that's okay. Like, I, I accept it. I mean, that, that sounds more profound than when it happened. I mean, I was just more like, oh, okay. So I'm back to my room playing with like my Furby or whatever. 90s kid. It just, it just, it never was something that like at the time really just hunkered me down. I was like, ugh. So this is what this is like, you know? I think it wasn't really till I got to middle school, high school, really the age where insecurity set in is you're going through puberty and you're growing up and you're like, what's going on with my body? Why is all this happening? What's good, you know, all that kind of thing. And I think, you know, I did, I did go through a bit of a period where I was just like, man, I wish I were skinnier. Man, I wish I looked good like all the other girls in my class. Man, I wish I could like, you know, shop at Target at the, the you know, like all the other girls shop at, but no, I have to shop at the plus size section at Walmart, which no hate against Walmart or Target, honest to God. But it just sucked because every everybody had cool clothes and I had frumpy old boring clothes and that that's so like that was definitely a hard realization that's kind of where insecurities would set in um i i want to say this really loosely i hate the word bullying i wouldn't say like bullying because it's not really the word for it i was teased for being bigger every now and then but it was never it was never like a massive I was bullied every single day. There were these people that would attack me. No, I never had that extent. Absolutely do not want to take away or be, you know, desensitizing to any experiences that anyone else has had there. I'm sure other people out in the world have experienced true, harsh, hor horrific bullying for their size, whether you be on the curvy or the slimmer side. Like, I understand there's people out there who have experienced heavy bullying and it's been you know a rough time for them and been an awful experience and I definitely don't want to take away that so you know when I say this this is very tame this is very I, I you know n nothing massive nothing to take away from somebody else's experience and say oh my experience is so horrible when it really wasn't I mean it was bad not to get me wrong I got my feelings hurt it wasn't a dramatic event shall I say but um I do remember this one time when I was in middle school, I was in like a home ec class and we were sitting watching a video and I think I was wearing like 
these really tight jeans or something one time and I think I did have some muffin top going on and these really like douchey guys behind me and they were sitting back there and they were snickering at me and laughing about my muffin top and I think <laughs> this is actually kind of funny but like I think at one point one of the guys was eating a bag of chips and I guess my there was like a bit of like a, a like a like my jeans were kind of open in the back like towards my my ass towards my butt and I think I think some guy slipped a potato chip in the back of, I mean my ass was not showing my butt crack was not showing I don't believe but I do remember the guys were laughing about it and there was like just a little bit of like like I guess my shirt was up a little too high and like just the lower of my back was showing and I guess my pants were open just a bit to where they slipped a potato chip and I stood up and I heard like crunch, crunch, crunch and I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> and I was so like, I was, I was upset of course. I was like, who would do that? Who would stick a potato chip in my ass? Like, that's so rude. And at the same time, I was like, that's funny. I think that was definitely something an experience that I had had dealing with being made fun of or being like laughed at or whatever, you know. That was, that's a more lighter moment, shall I say. Another moment that I was really um, dealing with bullied, being bullied um, for my weight was um, right before I hit high school. I think it was my eighth grade. You know, you know, I feel like I should go on the record and say that eighth grade is the grade that fucking sucks. Like, I can't think of anyone who says, like, yeah, eighth grade was awesome. That was the best year of middle school. No, it's not. Eighth grade is probably the worst grade in American school history. Like, that's always the shitty year. I don't know why that is. I don't know how that happens. But, like, I, anytime I ask somebody, I was like, hey, yeah, you remember eighth grade? Like, yeah, eighth grade sucked. Like, same. I hated eighth grade. Eighth grade was the worst. Because, you know, you're still in middle school. You're still at that, you know, preteen kind of age or you're getting ready to become a teenager and you're getting ready to go to high school and it's just this transition and you're just like in this holding pattern and just everything sucks in eighth grade. Like I, I, I do not look fondly on eighth grade at all. My mom used to uh, take me and my siblings to school um, throughout middle school and for a later part of high school. Um, but I think in eighth grade, my mom had something come up or something, and so she wasn't able to, like, take us to school. So we started riding the bus, or I started riding the bus. I don't think my siblings were old enough yet. But um, I started riding the bus, and everything was hunky-dory and fine. And then I think at one point, there were these two dudes, about a grade younger than me, which, honestly, looking back, I don't know why I was so upset about this, because they were younger than me, so it was like, okay... But I remember these, these two boys and they were douchebags and just being rude and being an asshole. And they started like looking at me. I, I remember like the first day they started noticing me and started looking at me and they point and <laughs> laugh and whatever. And I kind of looked at them like, okay, ha ha ha, hi, yeah, okay, get a life. Like, I don't give a shit what you're doing. And so it became... More and more that I saw it them, the more and more it became like an everyday occurrence kind of thing where they would just sit and laugh at me. They would sit and stare at me and I was like doing my own thing. I would be reading a book or listening to music or whatever, just doing my own thing. And I just, I'd see them at the corner of my eye, just ha ha ha, laughing their asses off, just laughing and staring. And it became a like, whoa, staring at me and they keep laughing at me. Like I've been ignoring them. I've been not bothered by them and now they like they keep doing it and I'm like what do I do and so I think just from that like I don't like to be stared or you know looked at for a long period of time I get really nervous if I know I'm being like stared at so I like started to get nervous because of that fact and they started noticing that I was staring so they thought oh, oh we're getting to her blah 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 and they keep doing it and I think it like later like as the days went on they started calling me blubber or you know, the other derogatory names like that. They'd be like, hey, lover, really loud, and just being annoying, being rude. It just kind of like, it didn't bother me at first, and then it just more and more that it kept happening, the more and more they kept laughing. It started to bother me to the point where I was like, I was upset. 
I, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't go home crying every day, but I did get to the point where I told my mom about it and I was like, hey, I don't know what to do about this. Like, I've tried to ignore them. I've tried to tell them off, basically saying, yeah, ha, 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 get a life, losers. Like, boo-hoo. You know, and, and nothing's working. And then one day, I got on the bus and I was sitting in the front seat closest to the driver and they had like a potted plant i think i think they were brothers if i'm not mistaken but they had like a potted plant that they took from their i guess for like their class or their project or something like that and thankfully this did not happen but they they were sitting like in another like towards the back of the bus and they had moved up closer to me when they saw me and they were right behind me and they were doing their usual ha 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 calling me blubber calling me names all kinds of stuff and i was ignoring it at first um i was a little upset i was a little nervous because they were close to me and i didn't want them to do anything to me and i was really nervous and i think one of the guys thought it would be funny to um take one of the plants that they had and they were going to dump it on my head and thankfully the driver noticed what was going on and he saw in his like river mirror which he can like see the whole bus saw that they were going to dump that on my head stop them and that was so uh, I was like such a relief I was like that was awful like who would do that to somebody it was just awful you know and and I, I looked back at them and I just gave them the nastiest look and I'm like this needs to stop right now i don't know what your problem is i don't know what your deal is why you're so obsessed with me but you need to chill like this cannot happen i'm going to report you if you don't if you try to do something like that to me again and i think that kind of like gave me my power back because i was just kind of going through like a like a, i don't want to confront them i don't want to do this anymore you know because I, I honest to god like i even like this today i hate confrontation unless unless i'm pushed to a point where i have to to have confrontation with someone i don't like confrontation and like i've gotten really better about it since being an adult but at that time when i was like what 13 14 or whatever i was awful with conflict i hated having conflict with people i hated you know i didn't know how to stand up for myself as i do today you know and i think that's kind of what really like hurt me the most and what really got me and so you know that definitely I think that was probably the only period that I really, you know, really struggled with my body image. And I really struggled with being positive about my body and really struggled with insecurities, you know. And I, I've always, um, you know, I, I, even to this day, I still have insecurities, you know. You know, I, I think it's a lessened a lot since then, thankfully. But, you know, um, I just, I've always been somebody who I just... I've always accepted my body for the way it is and I, I've under, come to the understanding that I'm not going to be the weight that I want. I, I, I'm kind of reluctant to say I'm the way I should be the way society wants to see me because I don't believe in that. I think that the view on society of how anyone, man or woman, should look is so completely skewed. It is so completely just messed up is the, the the mean way to say it There's so many society norms of what we should look like and what is beautiful and what size we should be and what this we should be and what that we should be and i i hate it and i never wanted to conform to what society expects of me and or or, or of any woman or any man or any person any kind of body type specifically. I never wanted to conform and say, oh, I, I'm gonna try to be skinny because society wants me to be. Or I'm gonna try to be this because society wants me. No, I've always in the back of my mind always said, I don't want that. I wanna be the size that I wanna be. I wanna be, or, or if I can't be the size that I wanna be, which I would like to be a little bit more on the slimmer side, that'd be nice. But that's not what's important. And I think, you know, growing up, I've always focused so strongly on not my weight, but being healthy. You know, your size, your your body image should be on how you see yourself as a whole. I, I mean, definitely how you see your body, but how you see your body, yourself as a whole. You know, I've always focused on just being healthy and just being the best for healthy version of myself. I want to feel good 
about myself from the inside out. Like, like not backwards. Well, mindset of like, oh, once I'm skinnier, I'll be a lot more happier. Or once I start doing this, or not just like with body, any kind of materialistic, if I just had this car, I'd be a lot more happier. Or if I had this certain job, I'd be happier. If I had these things, I'd be happier. No, never be the case when it comes to your happiness, especially with your body type. It should be from the out, inside out. You need to work on being the best you that you can be and then bring it to outside world, you know. We are perfect to uh, ourselves, to the world, just the way we are. We were made for a reason. We were made the way we were made. And we should embrace every single beauty, every single flaw, every single thing from the hairs to our head to tip tips of our toes that we were made just the way we are and we are perfect for the way we are. Yeah, I believe that we are created in God's image, that God created us and he created us perfectly. Um, I mean, he created us, per and I, I don't say perfect as we're not, we're not perfect beings because only God is perfect, but you know, the way he created us was designed by his plan. We are the way we are created, either whether it be soul, body, and all, based on how God planned for us to be created, you know. I do think of the verses like Psalm 139, 14, which is, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's probably one of like the most famous verses out there that you'll hear. I had to look this one up because I honestly forgot which verse it was, but it was Luke 12, 7, which is indeed the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. You know, that that's absolutely true. Like, you know, we are so worthy whether whether you feel insecure about your body or you feel insecure about any other thing you know in a spiritual sense what i believe is that god sees us as worthy you know we are perfect to him if you're not a spiritual god believe even if you're not a christian and you don't believe in god you know that same principle applies whatever you know belief system that you believe how we are on this earth we are made perfectly just as the way we are and you know i think that we should the first tip is to accept that finding yourself that if you have to go in the mirror and look goofy and look like a weirdo doing it saying i am perfect just the way i am that's absolutely what we should do. I strongly recommend that you know or, or you know what to even go a step further is to listen to bruno mars's uh, uh just the way you are that's such a great song because you know that's he's singing to a woman but you could sing it to yourself and say, you know what? I'm perfect just the way I am. My second tip, I think I've already kind of covered on this, just talking about my experiences and my viewpoints about body image, is to take care of your body. I cannot stress how important it is just your overall health, your overall self-esteem, your overall confidence, just your overall being is to take care care of your body. I, I mean, I'm totally preaching to the choir because I'm, I'm real bad about taking care of my body. I, I drink soda like it's going out of style. I'll eat Taco Bell and McDonald's more than I should and I won't exercise. So I, I you know what, this is advice I'm giving to myself as well because I'm just as bad. But, you know, just trying to make small steps or small efforts, whatever you need to do to take care of your body is so important because, you know, our days are numbered. We are not promised tomorrow. I feel like part of being happy and being your 100% self is taking care of yourself and taking care of your body especially because, you know, that, that, that old saying of, you know that saying, if you cannot pour from an empty cup, you cannot take care of somebody else if you don't take care of yourself first. I said earlier with the whole, you know, you want to not feel good from the outside in, you want to feel from the inside out. Well, you're going to feel like that if you are healthy. If you feel good about your body, if you feel good healthfully, you're going to feel good as a whole. So okay. this next tip, tip number three, is kind of superficial, I'm not going to lie. But honestly, I feel like it's such it's such a tactic that I've used over the years. 
and it's really actually help it's, but it's doing a pamper night or a pamper day or a pamper routine so say you're having a real shit day you know you don't feel good you feel really insecure you just you don't feel a hundred percent you know doing a pamper day or a pamper night or whatever can absolutely help bring more positivity and it kind of goes with tip number two of taking care of your body and feeling good from the inside out you know th that you that kind of is reversed in a way to kind of dodge that a little bit and say that you can like do a pamper night do like you know do some face masks take a nice luxurious long bubble bath you know put coconut oil on I, I can tell you right now i did a pamper routine today prior to filming this video and i feel pretty good not like like oh i'm so hot i just i feel healthy and i feel confident and i feel good in my skin because i just really i, I scrub my face i put coconut oil i just i feel rejuvenated i feel so much better about myself and i just feel a lot more refreshed i feel a lot more focused and honestly i feel a lot more confident just by doing a pamper because doing a pamper routine or a pamper night and you know doing that kind of thing i think really also helps with kind of you know if you're not feeling 100 percent, i think doing a pamper night is something that can really help achieve body positivity tip number four so, you know, as much as we can do a pamper night, as much as we can, you know, eat healthy and stuff, there are going to be days, no matter what, where you feel insecure or <clears throat> you don't feel as confident or you just don't feel your 100% self or you just don't feel comfortable in your skin for that day. And that is more than okay. We're going to have days like that. We're all humans and we're all going to have a day where we just feel like shit. And I think when you do have a day like that, it's most important to take it easy. Just relieve your stress. Just take it easy. You know, wh whatever taking it easy looks like to you, do that. I, I kind of, when I have days like that, I treat it like it's a rainy day. Like a, a, a bad rainy day. Like I'm having a bad day. I don't feel good. You know, maybe I, I truly don't like I don't feel good about myself or I just don't feel good in general You know just taking it easy and doing whatever feels comfortable or whatever that looks like to you whether it be chilling and watching some movies for a little bit and just kind of Just de-stressing or whether it's you know, maybe you want to go out for a walk or something just anything that just takes it easy You know when I feel crappy my go-to is staying in bed and watching movies I mean being careful not watching movies that make me feel even worse but just like happy Disney movies or happy comedies or even horror movies sometimes sometimes horror movies just take you right out like <laughs> and really distract you and you just forgot whatever you were worried about but I mean just you know that's what look taking it easy looks like to being kind to yourself tip number five that I have is creating a daily mantra um, you know I think creating a daily mantra is good for all kinds of different things for mind body and soul you know if you're someone that really particularly struggles with body image or struggles with body positivity creating a mantra that you you know and putting it somewhere where you can see it every day and really you know ingraining that mantra or saying that or saying that mantra every day can really help you remind yourself that hey i am beautiful the way i am i am perfect the way i am I embrace my flaws or I embrace this or you know like like for an example I I hate my arms I'm very insecure about my arms one of my mantra my my daily body positivity mantra would be like my my arms are not perfect and that's okay or I love my arms today or you know what I'm not gonna care what for showing my arms today anything like that just having some sort of mantra that you can repeat over to yourself or perhaps meditate on if you're a meditative person that can really help you to get in that body positive mindset wow i feel pretty exuberated <laughs> explaining all of that so much for hanging out with me today guys and getting real chatty and doing our soulful chat today 
I love you guys so much. Thanks for coming back. And I will see you guys on my next vlog. Or my next vlog post. Bye guys. See ya. Thank you.